A uh, big uh, good morning to 35th District Representative Dan Griffey. Morning, Dan. Good morning, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Good. It was nice seeing you and your lovely bride the other night. Oh, yeah. We had a good time at the gala. Always nice running into you, talking about some fun things. Now, normally, this is your first visit of the legislative session, and we've talked that normally you'll be in studio, but today is a is a special day up on the, on the Capitol Hill. What's going on? Yeah, we have a, a couple kids groups coming in that uh, want to talk about civics engagement, and I'm happy to oblige them. That's pretty cool. Today, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Are there a lot of uh, things uh, going on around the Capitol campus, speeches and things like that? Yeah, we'll have a lot of floor ceremonies uh, discussing the legacy of Dr. King. Uh, it's uh, really fun days in the legislature. Let's talk a little bit about what uh, you in the 35th district here have planned for uh, your time in the legislative on this short session. Uh, a lot of things to get done in a short amount of time. What have the constituents been uh, talking with you about? Uh, I know obviously the Hearst decision is a major uh, uh, issue for us here in Mason County and the surrounding rural areas. Uh, so some ideas on how the Hearst decision is coming along and the fix is there, and what else you you plan on looking at this year? So uh, with Hearst, we have uh, several options that we're looking at. Uh, it's still actively being no negotiated. Um, you know, just so, for background information, the Hearst uh, problem or Hearst decision it, it mainly is addressing two or three aquifers that are threatened in eastern Washington and imposing a draconian solution for the whole state of Washington. So what we want to do is make sure we point out that the rural communities that I represent, we don't have aquifer recharge problems. As a matter of fact, you've been seeing the aquifers recharge uh, quite a bit lately, I would imagine, with all the rain. And uh, let's just make sure we get a, uh, a real uh, righteous solution to the Hearst decision that adequately addresses the eastern Washington problems. But uh, let's don't put the draconian uh, uh, solutions in place for all Washingtonian citizens, especially the ones I represent. Yeah, it seems like uh, in this scenario that there is a real kind of east-west divide, if you will, uh, with a lot of the work, and correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the work primarily on this has focused on eastern Washington, like you were mentioning, but it did have some consequences here uh, for rural uh, landowners, and, you know, that is one of the things that uh, we're trying to figure out here in the county is how we're going to be able to open up some of this land and availability for people. Well, as you've heard me say probably a hundred times before, but what area doesn't grow at least a little bit start, it slowly backslides, and with the renaissance that you saw, we are... Uh, we are having or in uh, Shelton, uh, let's don't slow that down. Uh, let's, uh, let's point out, you know, accurately that there is pretty much an overload or overbuild in the Seattle King County metro area, and Shelton has a lot to offer. Uh, the, the North Mason area of Mason County has a lot to offer, and, and also um, uh, growth opportunities in the rural areas in Kitsap County and Thurston counties. Uh, all three areas have national airports that we can access and uh, and exploit for our good to make sure that we continue to grow. Um, let's make sure that those policies are, uh, you know, adopted. I'm working with local officials, uh, county commissioners, to uh, zone industrial properties to say, hey, look at us. We have a four-lane highway in 101. We have a national airport in the Shelton Airport. If we zone the properties, I believe that we can keep some businesses that are, uh, you know, threatening to move out of the state because they just can't find uh, good uh, places to locate where they have really good transportation options, uh, where we have all those. We have water, sewer, we've invested in the future. Um, so I'm going to continue to work on that, uh, non-legislatively, but just encouraging that those growth opportunities are exploited and uh, we can uh, bring jobs and more business activity to our wonderful area. Short session here, less than 60 days uh, now, obviously, as we're about a week in. Uh, but what are you uh, hearing about some of the proposed ideas uh, coming out of uh, the governor's office or from your counterparts on the Democratic side uh, that either, that both encourage uh, you in some of the things that they're looking at, but then also uh, discourage uh, you in uh, some of the uh, ideals that they'd like to push forth throughout this session? Well, we can go with discourage. Uh, a carbon tax uh, discourages me and a uh, 
sugary soda tax discourages me, and both of them for the same reason. They don't do anything to fix the problem. We at this time have no alternatives for to fossil, fossil fuels, and uh, I'm number one in uh, it's number one on my thought process. I'd like it to be the Jetson age. I, age. I'd like to, us to have fusion, fusion drive uh, engines in our vehicles where we uh, fuel with water and then the byproduct is water. We're getting there. Um, all too often in government we push too hard, and I don't see how taxing, uh, setting up this tax when there is no alternative for uh, the people to use because we can't get over physics. It, there is a certain amount of mass. Uh, that has to overcome a certain amount of friction, and uh, fossil fuel still is king. Now, we are going uh, at uh, uh, breakneck speed and developing those new alternatives, but let's back off on taxing the citizens with carbon tax. Um, let's incentivize the, the good, clean options. I mean, in Washington State, there's a company that's working on a fusion drive right now. Um, all too often, our policies just push the agenda way too fast, and it injures more than it hurts. So I'm there. Uh, let's declare hydroelectric power uh, renewable. Let's uh, exploit that resource. Let's make sure that we upgrade the turbines on the Columbia River. Let's um, cheer our successes. The 35th district sequesters more carbon than most of the uh, districts in the state of Washington and trees. We're doing good jobs. We're doing really good things, and we are moving at a very fast pace. Um, all too often, we want to move uh, some legislators want to move at a faster pace than industry can keep up with. So, uh, And then the sugary tax, I mean, even Seattle can't figure that one out. Some of those pictures I see online people are sharing at the big box stores of the cost of the case of whatever is 13 bucks, and when you add the tax into it, it, it basically doubles it. Yeah, we're, they're treating it like a sin, like uh, liquor and, uh, and tobacco and those sort of things. And and, uh, you know, I just think uh, that we should have some good choices and be able to make our choices where we pay our taxes. I think, uh, I, I hope and I believe that uh, those type of idea, that idea at least, is dead on arrival, and I will work to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, some of the good, though, Jeff, is we are still pushing very hard uh, on, uh, on protecting victims of felony sex crimes and going after the monsters that commit those crimes. And to that end, uh, there is more momentum to uh, end the statute of limitations on felony sex crimes, which you know over the last uh, three years, now in my fourth year, has been a push for me. And uh, I'm encouraged. I have a lot of supporters, uh, survivors from all over the state of Washington, every uh, demographic, every political perspective. Uh, they're on board. Uh, they want it now. They want to recognize that we're suffering for the rest of our lives. Why shouldn't the monsters that commit these crimes have to at least worry that a prosecutor will find a piece of evidence that could prosecute me for doing that, and uh, or them for doing that? So, uh, yeah, I'm encouraged with that. Been a lot of work too. On I know you were uh, deeply involved in helping to secure funds and gather monies for back testing of. Uh, all the rape kits uh, that have been in the state. I don't think we're at a completion on that, but uh, the, the funds were there, and do you get a sense that the, even more movement on, on that aspect of it, too, to try to fill all the backlog on these? Absolutely. We are uh, working. I've, I've uh, teamed up with uh, uh, Deputy Speaker uh, Pro Temper Tina Orwell on uh, making that happen, and uh, we are making uh, serious progress on getting that done. Uh, we had, uh, I talked to you about an issue last year where King County was not charging, or not King County, excuse me, Seattle, was not charging under Washington State RCW. They were charging under municipal code, which didn't exactly match, which prohibited the state patrol for testing those kids. So we have a fixed bill there uh, that's, that uh, allows the city of Seattle, which has the largest population of any metro area, to do those tests make sure that we have an accurate database and we can get those monsters off the streets. Well, I look forward to talking with you through uh, out the session here, of course, uh, 35th District Representative Dan Griffey. And if you have questions for Dan, you can always email them here and we'll get those uh, asked. And uh, Dan, have a good fun day with uh, the kids up there. All right. Thank you, Jeff. It's nice talking to you. Nice talking with you.